Hello Dragonfly Swarm, Yai Miko is a powerful DPS character and Nahida is broken, so you can imagine what happens when you put two such characters together in a team, but did you know that Nahida is mathematically one of Yai Miko's best teammates in the game? She even goes as far as surpassing the potential that a fully invested Bennett and C2 Kazuha can provide to Yai in many scenarios, and there are some very important reasons as to why. So in this video, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about why I consider Yai Miko and Nahida to be a god duo, including why they work, how to build them together, how much better they are than other teammates Yai can work with, and what teams they fit into strongest together for the meta. Well, if you can call the meta the meta anymore. But before I start, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing as it very much helps my channel, and legend has it that all of my subscribers win their 50-50s. Scientifically proven. So before Dendro came out, and even then, before Nahida came out, Yai Miko had clear weaknesses. She was difficult to slot into many teams, mostly only played as a sub DPS, and yet took up quite a bit of field time, etc, etc. But most of that is in the past, because Dendro has remedied a lot of these issues, but Nahida has not only further remedied Miko's issues, she's also wildly accommodated Miko's strengths. So I guess the first question we have to answer is, why exactly are Yai Miko and Nahida so strong together? Because by all accounts, you could slot Nahida with any Electro DPS and they'd get stronger, but yet with Yai Miko, that increase in strength is far more dramatic. And it all starts with Yai Miko's interaction with Elemental Mastery. For any Dendro-based team she'll slot into, be it Hyper Bloom or Quicken, Yai Miko's ability to trigger reactions should greatly incentivize incentivize giving her some form of elemental mastery, especially considering her Electro application is quite good. But unfortunately, it's actually usually difficult to do that without losing out on her amazing personal damage, because Yaimiko's elemental mastery damage scaling only applies to her turrets. So therefore, if you gave her, for example, an elemental mastery sands without large external attack buffs to compensate, Yaimiko's turrets will deal a considerable amount of damage, but her burst will not, at all, and her overall damage output will be lower. And that's the first reason why Nahida is so valuable to her. Nahida allows Yai Miko to not only very easily set up reactions such as Aggravate so that she can amp her damage, but she also provides Miko with a 250 Elemental Mastery bonus inside of her burst field, which is more than enough to make good use of Miko's passive. For context, the 250 EM that Nahida's burst can grant to Yai is about a 38% increase in her turret damage, which is huge. And since it's an external buff, you no longer have to worry about splitting between attack stats or EM stats, you can focus fully on her personal damage. This interaction alone allows Yai Miko a lot of build freedom, and when you also consider that Nahida herself will be dealing significant damage as well, those two together create a stronger duo combo than some of the most notoriously strong buffers in the game combined, which I will prove with math in just a second. But additionally, Nahida's ability to allow Miko more flexibility also extends to on-field combat, because thanks to the Quicken Aura as well as Nahida's active character Elemental Mastery buff, Yai can actually extend her own rotations to act as an on-field driver, which before Dendro was very ineffective, but is now actually quite respectable for driving more aggravates in a single rotation and filling for downtime from her other teammates. This is especially valuable if you plan to run a hyper-aggressive team such as Yai, Fischl, Nahida, and Kazuha, because it'll be much easier to swap around while maintaining enough Electro application to Swirl Electro, which is a pretty common struggle with most Nahida teams, and that Electro Swirl is invaluable for Yai Miko's personal damage output. So, exactly how strong are Yai and Nahida together? Because as I so boldly stated earlier, Yai and Nahida together output more damage than Bennett and Kazuha can output with Yai combined. And those two are some of the most well-known and powerful buffers in the game, and before Dendro they were often THE go-to buffers to team with Miko anyways. So with that said, the math I'm slapping on the screen shows a scenario in which Yai Miko takes to the field with 15 turret strikes and one full burst cast. Yai Miko's build will remain the same in both scenarios, but on one hand we have a fully invested Nahida going up against, on the other hand, a fully invested Bennett and a fully invested C2 Kazuha to see which combo outputs more damage together. And as stated in the math, Yai and Nahida alone output 25% more total rotation damage than Yai, Bennett, and Kazuha, which is absolutely insane for a few reasons. Number one, it proves that Nahida is capable of contributing a significant amount of help alongside Yai without having to take up a third team slot, so you automatically have much more team options and flexibility. Now, the equation here is a bit odd because we're comparing Yai's personal damage as an on-fielder, so the Nahida equation does pull ahead because of the fact that we're also considering her off-field damage, which is being triggered by Yai. But that brings me to number two, which is that Nahida's presence allows Yai to slot even more buffers, such as Kazuha into the last two slots, so that this disparity becomes even larger between the teams that do use Nahida versus those that don't. And again, much of this power comes from Nahida's ability to supply Miko with a huge chunk of EM, allowing Yai Miko to enjoy her fourth ascension passive without sacrificing any personal damage whatsoever. And speaking of the fact that they both provide each other with buffs to their own personal damage outputs, you can kind of think of it as a synergy that plays somewhat like Singcho and Yelan's double hydro synergy. The two provide each other with high personal damage buffs so as to create some of the highest single 
target hydro damage in the game, which Nahida and Miko are also doing to a similar extent, functionally speaking. They provide each other with quicken auras, while Nahida provides Miko with a massive boost to her aggravate and turret damage, and Miko frequently triggers Nahida's marks for large personal dendro damage. And just to mention what I brought up earlier, part of the value of this duo is that Nahida is providing Miko with a lot of practicality that she otherwise wouldn't be able to enjoy. The flexibility that these two have as a team core is quite nice, both in the team building process and in the middle of combat with rotations. So with that all said, we gotta talk about the best ways to build Yaimiko and Nahida for each other, because there are specific best builds to capitalize on their synergy. Starting with Yaimiko, you're gonna want to give her gear that capitalizes on her personal damage, since her passive and reaction damage is already enjoying Nahida's elemental mastery. This means that attack stats will gain value, crit obviously already has a lot of value, especially in aggravate teams, but it doesn't mean that the occasional EM substat is useless. With artifact sets, your best options for Yai will first be sets like 4-piece Thunder Soother for the massive damage percent bonus it provides to her. This bonus does apply to her aggravate damage, so it's very powerful in these teams, but Nahida's Dendro application often overtakes Electro Auras. So if you do use this set, you're gonna have to compensate by pairing Miko with another Electro Applicator, such as Fischl, or using Miko as an on-field driver to maintain a decent Electro Aura, etc. Because otherwise, 4-piece Thunder Soother will lose a significant amount of its value. A 4-piece Emblem is also still quite valuable, especially in these Nahida teams, because it's going to be naturally a bit harder to fund Miko's burst. Keep in mind though that this set does absolutely nothing for Miko's turret damage, which makes up roughly half of her total personal damage output. So you'll have to be able to burst every rotation or this set won't really be worth it. You can use 4-piece Thundering Fury, but only for the reaction damage bonuses and the 2-piece Electro bonus, because Miko doesn't care about the skill cooldown mechanic at all. My personal favorite combo though is to run Miko with a 2-piece Thundering Fury and 2-piece Attack set so that I can just straight up invest into her attack. And this works so well with Nahida because Miko doesn't need to prioritize EM as heavily. But you can still use 4-piece Guild of Dreams on Miko even with Nahida. You'll just have to keep in mind that in Quicken teams, it will technically provide a little bit less value than these other set options because of Nahida's already very large EM bonus. In Hyper Bloom teams, however, it won't lose value since EM is so important to the Electro Reaction carry. But with Artifact stats, again, your goal is to invest heavily into Miko's personal damage, so you'll find the most value by running a traditional Attack Sands, Electro Goblet, and Crit Circlet. However, in Elemental Mastery, Sands can still prove useful in very specific scenarios, namely those in which you already have a lot of attack on Miko, or you're running her in a Nahida Hyperbloom team. With the weapons, you're gonna want to equip Miko with as much offensive power as possible, so first and foremost, her signature weapon is gonna be her best by quite a long shot. But because of its similarly powerful crit value and passive, Lost Prayer can be quite nice as well, especially if you keep Miko on the field long enough for the passive. But Skyward Atlas is also actually quite good, and it's interesting to note that this weapon will increase the value of running an Elemental Mastery Sands since it already comfortably covers the attack that Miko would need with Nahida teams. Other weapons like the Widzith and Solar Pearl are also very powerful for Miko, and Solar Pearl especially is very potent when allowing Miko to play on the field. But even weapons like Mappa Mare and Hakushin Ring can be really potent on Miko in these teams, Mappa Mare helping to drive more reaction damage, Hakushin Ring helping to buff Miko and Nahida's elemental damage. Other DPS catalysts won't typically perform as well as the ones I've recommended, but I do want to mention that although I don't strictly recommend EM based weapons, they can work. In Hyper Bloom teams especially, you're gonna find value by pairing Miko with Thousand Floating Dreams, Sack Frags, Magic Guide, etc. But you'll also be considerably tanking Miko's personal damage, which again, I don't recommend. Anyways, as for Nahida's build, it will remain similar to those that I've recommended in two of my previous Nahida videos, but I'll still go over it briefly. With Miko, Nahida can occasionally play on the field if you choose, but there's also gonna be quite a bit of time where Nahida will remain off the field, most notably during her burst duration, so you're gonna wanna focus your artifact stats on whatever pieces will help Nahida reach 1000 EM. Keep in mind that this will often mean that you'll have to run two or even three Elemental Mastery main stats, but if you run two, try to keep them on the circlet and the sands so that you can maintain the best damage output with a Dendro Goblet. Nahida's Dendro damage has very high potential in this team, so I do still recommend running her with four piece Deepwood, but technically, four piece Gilded Dreams can outperform Deepwood if your artifact pieces have much better stats and your team doesn't have any other major sources of Dendro damage. And as for Nahida's best weapons, some of the higher end DPS weapons, such as Kagura's Verity, Solar Pearl, and the Widzith, can be very strong, but you'll typically have the easiest time building around her elemental mastery based weapon options. So weapons such as Thousand Floating Dreams, Sack Frags, Magic Guide, Wandering Even Star, etc. And now that we've discussed how to build Yaimiko and Nahida together, we finally have to discuss what teams these two slot into strongest together as a core synergy. The first one I want to go over is the Yaimiko and Nahida Quicken team, because Quicken teams allow both Electro teammates and Dendro teammates to amplify their damage on enemies. And this interaction works especially well for characters like Miko and Nahida, who both apply a lot of Electro and Dendro respectively. But as I mentioned earlier, the reason these two work so well in this team archetype is because Miko gets a lot of value out of 
playing as an on-fielder with Nahida's burst buff. The extra aggravates she can drive, as well as the ability to wildly increase the flexibility of the team's rotations, makes these two invaluable with one another if your goal is to create a potent aggravate team. So with that said, some of the most powerful quicken teams you can build around these two include, first and foremost, a traditional aggravate team. In this team, you're gonna pair Miko and Nahida with a second electro unit and then a flex character for the last slot, who can either be a buffer for more aggressive playstyles or a support unit for more comfortable playstyles. For your second electro unit, I highly recommend Fischl because not only does on-field Yai help to drive Fischl's fourth ascension passive, much easier despite Nahida's dominant dendro aura, but Fischl also batteries Miko's burst very well. So the three of these characters together can actually output some of the highest amount of aggravates of any team in the game, and they provide a very high amount of damage while doing so. But you can technically opt to use this slot instead for characters like Beto or Shinobu for more off-field presence or healing, or you could completely turn the team around by using the third slot for someone like Sino or Kuching, which would turn Nahida and Miko into your off-fielders. And again, the fourth slot can be any number of flex characters, but I highly recommend an animal unit if you want a more offensive approach, or a utility unit such as Zhongli if you'd rather play safe and consistently. Yeah, Nahimiko aggravate teams are crazy. Granted, they can be a bit tedious at times since Nahida makes it a bit more difficult for animal units to swirl Electro, but being able to defeat Raiden in one single rotation is no small feat at all. As long as you manage your energy and your cooldowns well, this team is simple and quite flexible to work with on the field. And the other very interesting team comp that Miko and Nahida can run together is actually a Nahida Hyperbloom team, which I discussed in great detail in a previous video, but I didn't really talk much about Miko's variant of this team. With Yaimiko playing as your Hyperbloom enabler, this team will actually focus a bit less on Hyperbloom damage and more on Miko's personal damage since you don't want to build her entirely into Elemental Mastery, but the team's damage output will still remain very high thanks to Nahida and Miko's core synergy together, as well as the help of Hyperbloom and its many interactions. With the Nahimiko Hyperbloom team, your third slot will have to be a Hydro unit such as Singcho, Yelan, Kokomi, Ayato, etc., and quite frankly, almost any Hydro unit in the game can work. They'll just provide different playstyles to the team depending on which one you choose. And in the fourth slot, again, you can use use it as a flex spot for any number of teammates, whether it be an aggressive teammate such as an animal unit or a supportive teammate such as a shielder or healer. The only principle to follow with your fourth slot is that it cannot be a character that could disrupt your hyperbloom reactions, such as a pyro unit or another electro unit that could steal Miko's hyperblooms, etc. But in Miko's case, I actually quite recommend running an animal controller in the last slot, not only because hyperbloom damage is technically AoE, but also because if enemies are grouped together, Miko's turrets will hit all of them, which massively raises her damage potential. It also makes it wildly easier for her to target target as many bloom seeds as possible in the most practical way. This team has the luxury of being powerful in single target and AoE scenarios, but in Miko's case, as you can see, it absolutely shreds in single target, especially when paired with the infamous double hydro strategy. Point being, Miko Nahi the Hyperbloom works very well throughout multiple scenarios, and although it's much less budget friendly than other Hyperbloom variants, it's a great option if you want to spend your resources on Nahida and Miko together. But that about sums up my guide on the Nahida Yai Miko God Duo. These two work very well together, and their compatibility, again, kind of reminds me of Singcho and Yelan, in that they both help each other by massively increasing one another's damage ceilings, so the synergy itself is less of a supportive synergy and more of a holy god that amount of damage should be illegal type of synergy. Anyways, like and subscribe, you know the deal. If you made it this far into the video, you might as well. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!